everyone, welcome back to Carrots and Olives. My name is Brittany and today we are going to do the overview of the month for my currently inked in May fountain pens. And so what I have in front of you are the notebook, my ink journal. I have an Estrabook cup and an Estrabook um, pen pouch. I'm, <laughs> uh, what is it called, sleeve pouch? One of those. Uh, I got all of these from Atlas Stationaire, and I'll have a link for you down below if you're interested in 10% off. Um, so let's get started. These inks and pens are, um, for the ones that I mainly inked up for the month, are in here. And then these are the extras of the additions that I received for this month. So let's start with the main, the main bad boy first, and then we can move our way into the additions. So I have actually set up my page and I'm going to do this vertical. I don't know, I thought I'd try it. And this is something I do in my journals too. Sometimes I get bored of just writing traditionally top to bottom um, in a smaller, slimmer size and want to go um, horizontal. So that's what we're gonna do today. And I felt like maybe I should bring back my original um, like scale and from one to 10 on these three different sections for each of the pen combinations for this month. So to get started, gonna open up my pen cup and we are gonna start with the smallest pen I don't normally have this one tucked in there I just kind of toss it in um, but we're gonna start with we're gonna start with this one all right so this is the pelican M120 in extra fine. And I got this off of a gentleman who was selling his personal collection. Um, this pen writes very well. And I didn't really appreciate it until probably the second or third time I wrote with it. So I believe it's a steel nib. So we have the Let's zoom in just a little bit more. Pelican M120. I have it in an extra fine. And the ink is Laringal Path. Okay, so if we're getting into how well this writes, the flow of this ink into the nib is amazing for an extra fine. And so I am giving it a 10. The comfort, it's very comfortable. There are some threads here. They don't get in the way. And the, um, the, the jump from the where I put my fingers to the body of the pen is very subtle and doesn't bother me at all. It's very comfortable. <laughs> and plus where the... Um, the cap rests, it doesn't, I don't know if it's because it kind of has this little dip here, but it doesn't hurt the inside web of my hand. Um, so that's also a benefit. And then color, this color, if I were to see this on, like some, if I were to see it in person, I would normally like not want to 
use this color at all because I think it looks like poopy baby poop or something. <laughs> um, but after I've been riding with it, it actually has some shimmering properties and it does have some shading properties and I love this ink. It's beautiful. So I'm going to give it a nine um, because it's not normally a color I gravitate towards. You know, it's in that weird, com um, that weird in between yellow and green and not necessarily like a color I would choose normally. Um, however, writing with it and seeing how it performs all together with this pen combination has been outstanding and I've been enjoying the color even more. Sorry for the shakiness. I need to somehow study my camera a little bit better. Um, so yeah, so that is the Pelican M120. Next, we are going to do this guy. And this is the Pelican. M200 and this is in the uh, media or this is in it's in the fine I get this one confused the other one so this one's in the fine and it is with winter wood dominant industry it's a dark brown which are the favorites which is a favorite of mine having a dark saturated color because it makes it easy to read and um, if it has even a little bit of shading that is always a bonus um, this one's really nice and dark for flow, very similar to the Pelican M120. So flow is 10. Comfort, just as comfortable, maybe just a tad bit, um, un, like not as comfortable as the 120 because this area, it flares up, and I think that's where maybe my fingers um, feel a little bit cramped because I don't have that smooth transition down to the nib like I do with the 120. So I'm going to give it an 8. And then for a color, I love this color, this dark burnt umber almost. I'm giving it a 10. And then it has a very subtle shading property, so I really enjoyed that. Okay, so next is a very similar, uh, pretty much the same pen, but this one is the demonstrator version. So this is the Pelican M205 because it has silver trim. And this one is in a medium. I have Herbain Vert Degree. And this one doesn't cut it for me that much. I think that the flow is okay. Um, I feel like it could be a little bit better. So I'm going to give it an eight. And for the comfort, same thing. It's an eight because this is, this is the exact shape of the last pen. Color, not one of my favorites. This gray, 
looks more green blue to me and not the green blue I prefer. I think it's a little more warm. I don't know, there's something about this ink that I just don't gravitate towards and I did not write very often with this pen because of this ink um, and pen combination. It wasn't, I feel like it doesn't flow as well as this Pelican M200 with the Winter Wood Dominant Industry. And so I'm giving this, I'm giving it a six. But I do like the pen itself. This was actually my first Pelican. And <clears throat> when I initially purchased this pen, I was so excited that I didn't even realize how tiny it would be and also how lightweight it would be. And I was, it was one of more, one of my more pricier pens at the time. And I was a little bit disappointed um, when I first purchased this pen. Okay, so next is this beautiful one. And this is the bump up from the M200 line into the M400. So this is a Pelican M400 extra fine and I was using Troublemaker Autumn Gray yeah, so this pen has run out of ink. I'm not going to re-ink it. So I wanted to see how far I can get. Um, either I just didn't ink it very well initially, or I really like ended up using all the ink very quickly, which I find very difficult because these pens are piston filled, so they do hold a lot more ink. And I'm just gonna use a gel pen to write the rest. So as for flow, this one was okay. Um, the color is very pretty. It's unique. It's kind of like a dark green. Um, and it has some interesting shading properties, uh, but for some reason it felt a little dry to me. So I'm giving this an eight. Comfort, the 400s are, um, they're okay. I mean, they're pretty much the same as the 200, except that you have a uh, gold nib and it still flares up and then you get these threads that aren't very sharp or anything, but still it the girth here is very similar to a M200. So I'm giving it an eight. And then for color, again, this color was actually really pretty and I wanna see it in more of my other pens. So I'm giving it a nine. Next is the Pelican M600. And I was so excited about getting this pen because I felt like this was gonna be my the prettiest pen I own um, at the time. And this one is in a broad, and you can see a big difference between medium and then getting into the broad. I feel like this is more like a, a double broad or something. Um, like there should be something in between this medium and broad for the Pelican. So the ink I have is Eba Blue Neo Sotis. And you get very thick, even lines. Okay, so the flow, the flow of this ink, it's very wet and it's perfect, it's so smooth. I'm giving this a 10. Comfort, definitely more comfortable than the M200s and 400s. So I'm giving it a nine. 
and then the color is um, pretty. However, I felt like it just gets really light over time when I'm writing with the broad. So um, it can be a little bit difficult to read um, in comparison to what I prefer, more saturated inks. This one is kind of in the middle, leaning a little bit more towards the lighter inks. So I'm giving it an eight. Okay, last but not least is the M800. <clears throat> Oops, 800. And this is in the fine. Um, the ink I'm using is Urban Bleu Calanc. It reminds me of the sea. Um, it's a pretty turquoisey blue ink, leaning more towards turquoise. And uh, the flow of this is a little bit on the drier side. Um, I feel like it could be a little bit wetter, even though this is a fine. So I'm giving it an eight. Comfort is very comfortable. Initially when I got this pen, I thought that the M800 was super heavy. And there is a significant difference in weight. However, um, as my knowledge has grown with fountain pens and my collection, I realized that this pen fits my hand and is very comfortable um, to write with at its weight now. So I'm giving it a 10. Color, this color is really pretty. I. There is no doubt about that. It's really pretty. It has some shading properties and I am excited to see it in other, um, other fountain pens. So I'm giving it a 10. All right. So that pretty much is my overview for this month. And I am going to pick one pen out of uh, these, was it three, this six set. And I would say that my favorite has to be the M120. Overall, it's just been performing like top notch. Um, M120 with this ink would be uh, my favorite out of all the others for the month. So it just, made me happy and I was really shocked that it would make me so happy with this color but it does have this really pretty shading and also like glistening glitter uh, ink that is just amazing so this month it's very bouncy nib and I can kind of squeeze out a little bit more ink on the downstrokes. So I'm just gonna write May's best pen, that's my Pelican M. 120. Yeah, and it comes out pretty wet, so really nice, really nice. All right, so uh, I will talk just briefly about some of the other pens that I use at the end latter half of this month and that is going to be this set of pens so I have my gin house here and I shared a video of them 
earlier this month and they write very well um, after I adjusted them. So the blue one had written well out of the box. The purple and the green were a little bit scratchy. I did some mesh work and um, making the tines a little bit more spacious uh, so to allow more ink to flow through. And since then they have been writing like top notch. So I'm actually really impressed with these. And I would definitely suggest um, to anyone who's um, interested in fountain pens to start, start here actually uh, with these to see if this is the kind of pen you want to pursue um, at a higher price. So next is a new, my latest pen, which is the Pilot Custom in A23 in Amber. And I really wanted to get the brown one. So I got that, but I also wanted to get a fine nib. And so I got uh, both. So I initially, I had the, um, the black one and I had a medium nib and I felt like the medium nib was really wide for a platinum fountain pen. Um, and I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoy this fine. Then we have my Sailor Rialo, and um, I love this. I love how the uh, finial extends a little bit further at the end, and it's still cut off on the edges, so they're not rounded. Um, and then I love how I can have this ink window, and it's a piston filler, so uh, has a good ink capacity and. The nib is just beautiful. It's slightly bigger, larger body, and makes it very comfortable to write unposted. And the balance is just perfect for me. So I have been enjoying this fountain pen. And at the same time, I purchased this beautiful one. And it has like this pink glitter with white finials and gold accents, really pretty. Um, this one was the taco color and it has a 14 karat gold nib, but it writes, it's a medium as well and it writes quite thick um, and it's very smooth. So enjoying that. So my plan is to keep writing with the pens that are still inked up. Um, I managed to empty the ink from this one and I'm going to also try to use up the ink in all the rest of my birds here. And that's about it. I want to thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any comments. I hope you enjoyed some of the examples I also shared in my journal. And uh, I hope you guys have a good weekend, rest of your weekend and a good day. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye.